Hello and welcome to today's episode of International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. Eighth round of talks resumed on Iran nuclear deal. Report finds high rate of police shootings in Canada. Brazil's Kinza people secure compensation in power line case. And finally, Libyan uh, parliament refuses to set new election date. The eighth round of talks around the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action or GCPOA is underway in Vienna. Representatives from Iran, Russia, China, Germany, France and the UK resume meetings on December 27. Iran has laid out conditions necessary for it to return to its commitments under the 2015 nuclear deal. Uh, these include a complete lifting of all sanctions imposed by the US after it withdrew uh, from the deal in 2018. These include some 1,600 unilateral sanctions on Iran, including on crucial oil exports. Iran is seeking a verification period to determine if said sanctions have been effectively lifted. It has also asked for guarantees that the US will not abandon the GCPOA in the future or reimpose sanctions. After Monday's Joint Commission meeting, Iran's lead negotiator Ali Bagheri Kani said that the delegations agreed that good progress has been made. As reported by Press TV, he added that Iran's demands had been accepted in principle. However, discussions were needed on the frameworks, mechanisms and criteria involved for a final agreement. European Union envoy Enrique Mora added that the talks must end within a reasonable amount of time, which could be a matter of weeks. He added that both Tehran and Washington needed to make difficult political decisions. While US representatives are present in Vienna, Iran has refused direct talks. Negotiations are set to continue on issues including financial and banking-related sanctions. 32 people were shot and killed by police in Canada between January 1 and November 30. A report by the Canadian press has found that on-duty officers shot at 64 people in total. Seven of them were injured. Despite the uprising against racism and police violence in 2020, little has changed. There have been at least three fatal shootings in Canada in December alone, which have not been counted in the report. The cases documented this year are similar to 2020 when 60 people were shot, out of which 36 were killed. The report identified race in 17 shootings this year. More than 50% of victims were indigenous people and 17% were black people. For context, less than 5% of Canada's population is indigenous and around 3.5% is black. The report also found that police had been called because of weapons in less than 30% of the cases. This was followed by incidents of domestic assault or a person of interest in an investigation. In six shooting cases, police had been called to perform a wellness check on persons who might be undergoing a mental health crisis. Four people were killed. Nine people were killed during similar so-called wellness checks in 2020. A recent study also found that fatal shootings by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police rose by 39% between 2010 and 2019. Non-deadly shootings grew by 50%. In 2021, the RCMP was involved in 23 shootings, which was the most out of any Canadian police force. A federal court in Brazil's Amazona state has issued a key ruling in favour of the indigenous Kinza people. The case is related to the Tukurui transmission line extension. The 721-kilometre power line would connect Boa Vista in the Roraima state to Manaus in the Amazonas. Out of this, 125 kilometres would carve through the Kinza or Vaimiri Atroari people's land. An estimated 200 transmission towers would also have to be set up. The construction contract for the Tukurui line was awarded to a private company, Transnote, in 2012. However, its environmental license was suspended in 2014. The long-delayed project has started to gather speed under far-right President Jair Bolsonaro. According to the Social Environmental Institute, deforestation on indigenous lands has grown by 138% under this government. In August 2021, Kinza leaders submitted a proposal for minimum compensation to the government and Transnote. As reported by Brazil de Fato, the compensation was related to 27 irreversible and 10 mitigated social and environmental impacts. After a consultation com uh, compliant with ILO standards, the figure proposed was 133 million rials. The Amazonas Federal Court's first civil court has ruled that this proposal must be accepted for Tukurui's licensing to continue. It noted that the project was already causing irreversible impacts on the Kinza people's lands, culture and traditions. The court has stated that the refusal to accept the compensation proposal was unjust and disproportionate. 
It has warned if the amount of, uh, is not paid, the accounts of all companies benefiting from the Tukuri line will be blocked. And for our final story, Libya's parliament has postponed a key vote to decide a new date for the presidential elections. The High National Electoral Commission had proposed January 24th after the much-awaited election failed to take place on December 24. During the session on December 27, the parliament rejected continued interference by foreign powers into Libya's internal matters. The UK, the US, France, Germany and Italy had issued a joint statement on December 25 demanding early elections. Instead of a new date, the parliament debated on a recommendation made by the parliamentary committee in charge of the election. The panel stated that the January election had been set according to a political consideration. As such, it would meet a similar fate as last week's polling date. The committee recommended that the current political process be replaced with a new one. This would include changes to the interim government of Prime Minister Abdul Hamid Abiba. It also proposed the formation of a constituent committee to draft a new constitution. Libya has had no constitution since uh, long-term uh, leader Muammar Gaddafi suspended the last text in 1969. Last week's elections were part of a years-long UN-backed political process. Conflicting groups agreed to a permanent ceasefire in 2020 and an interim government was approved in February. However, issues including electoral laws and the candidature of controversial figures like Khalifa Haftar ultimately led to the postponement of elections. And that's all that we have for you today. For more such stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.